Hello to party members, old and new. If you are here watching this video, then I'm going to presume that either you or a friend have in fact never LARPed before. Don't worry, I'm sure you're going to love it. If you don't know what LARP is, LARP stands for Live Action Role Play, and it is essentially the Pokemon evolution of those play pretend games you played as a child. LARP is a hobby that is played around the world with thousands of different games everywhere with all sorts of different themes and genres for you to play. Getting started in LARP, however, can be a bit intimidating, which I don't want to be a deterrent from getting you involved with this amazing hobby. So here are my tips on how to survive your very first LARP. Okay, so make sure that you do the prep work. Everything is so much easier if you go into a LARP prepared. LARP is often fast paced and emotions can run very high, which makes the, the whole thing a little bit of an overwhelming experience. So the last thing you want to be worrying about is what you're going to be eating for dinner or what clothes you're going to be wearing the next day. If you know that you can just go back to wherever you're sleeping, grab what you need and go, then you're going to find the whole thing a lot easier and therefore a lot more enjoyable. And then you only have to really focus on having the best game that you possibly can. So in pre-event prep, you only really need to think about six things. Number one, how are you getting there and how are you getting back again? Depending on how far you're traveling and what your travel options are, there is a strong possibility that this is gonna take up a large chunk of both your time and your money. So make sure to do some comparisons of what all of your actual options are. You want to be looking at what are the cheapest options, what are the fastest options, what are the most comfortable options. Make an Excel sheet if you have to. It may seem excessive, but trust me, it's worth it if you make sure that everything you need to go traveling is there for you. Number two, what are you going to be eating? You need to make sure that you're gonna have enough energy to get through your entire event and you don't want to be sit back not knowing where your next meal's coming from. If food is being provided for you at a catered event, are you going to need to have snacks in between? If the event is not being catered, then do you need to bring your own cooking equipment with you or is that being provided for you? How are you planning on keeping your food cool? And if you're staying outside, how are you gonna keep it safe from animals? Rats are a real thing and they will gnaw through boxes to get to your food. Personally, I was always taught to either keep food in a solid container like a cool box so rats can't get in or to hang it up high so that it's not reachable by small animals on the ground. Those hanging mesh storage nets that kids had in the 1990s slash early 2000s, you know, to put their toys in, they're great for this kind of thing. Preferably not in the tent where I'm going to be sleeping though, just to be safe. Which brings me on to point three. Where are you going to be sleeping? Accommodation may be provided for you, but are you gonna to have to bring your own bedding? If it's not being provided for you and you're staying outside, do you actually own a tent? And is it a good enough tent to keep you warm and dry? Because I don't know about where you live, but where I live, the weather is terribly unpredictable. This is your very first time laughing, so you probably don't need to worry too much about whether it looks in character or out of character. You just need to make sure that it's somewhere comfortable for you to sleep. There is almost always an out of character area for you to be camping at these sort of things. And as this is your very first event, you don't want to necessarily buy an in character looking tent if it turns out that actually this isn't the hobby for you. There's no point in wasting your money. Is your sleeping bag going to be keeping you warm? Believe it or not, not all sleeping bags are made for every season. Heck, not even every sleeping bag is made to be used outside. So please make sure whatever sleeping bag you have with you is actually gonna keep you alive in the event that the temperature drops to what I can only describe as glacial levels. How are you staying insulated from the floor? Lying on the floor is one of the greatest ways to have all of your body heat drain out for you from you as quickly as possible. So you really want to minimize your contact with the floor directly as much as you can. Camping mats, camp beds, and inflatable mattresses will all do the job appropriately. Levels of comfort, however, do vary. So do make sure that whichever one you get matches your personal preference. Next, what are you going to actually be wearing? How many days you're going to these events is gonna dictate how many sets of clothes you're actually going to need. Some LARPs will in fact have places where you can wash your clothes. Most will not. The ones that do often tend to be rather large, big events. And even then, definitely not all of them have them. It's definitely a rare luxury kind of thing. 
So it's generally good practice to have at least one clean outfit to wear for every day that you are attending a lot. Because trust me, clean clothes are great for good mental health. And as any LARPer can tell you, building costumes is loads of fun. Plus you want to be able to stay warm slash dry slash cool slash comfy throughout the course of a LARP event and you'll be surprised how many of those you'll hit within a single day. And then of course you're there for a multi-day event so yeah, unpredictable weather. If you need tips on a basic LARP costume I actually have a video already prepared on this which I will link for you in the description box below as well as the little card thing at the top. I have several videos that I will be recommending to you through the course of this video. I will put them all in the description box just to make your life easier. Feel free to watch them at your leisure. Many LARPers will tell you to bring spare socks if you are playing outdoors and I will echo that sentiment. Bring spare socks. Wet feet tend to make people miserable and if you're miserable you're not having fun. So make sure that your feet are dry as much as you can. Bring spare socks, have a set of socks that are specifically for when you are sleeping so you can always guarantee that your feet are dry while you're asleep. Trust me, you'll be happy in the long run. Also, have you got all of your basic essentials for you to be able to survive a LARP? I'm talking specifically about the things that you as a person will need. Do you have your toothbrush? Do you have your hairbrush? Do you have all of the medication that you have to take in order to stay alive every day? If you are like me and take so many tablets that you rattle when you jump up and down, trust me, bring those with you. You will need things to eat and drink from and you'll probably need something to be able to wash those in as well. Not to mention all the stuff that you'll need to actually cook food as well as clean up after yourself. I have yet another video which goes into a lot more detail on all the things that you should bring with you if you are planning to go off LARPing. Again, link, description box, check it out, go. And lastly, how are you staying safe at a LARP? If you are going off LARPing with your wonderful friends then you all need to make sure that you have a plan to keep each other safe at a LARP event. Roleplay generally involves being encouraged to get into a character and get out of your comfort zone. You are encouraged to try new things. Add to that a surprisingly strong drinking culture and you suddenly find yourself in a cocktail of possible risky behaviour. And I'm not going to lie to you and say that there are no people in the roleplay community who will take advantage of that. 99% of LARPers in my experience are decent, caring and wonderful people. That unfortunately, however, does not mean that that last 1% does not exist. I will stress that right now that there is no behaviour that you can undertake at a LARP that means you deserve to be taken advantage of. Roleplay is not consent under any circumstances. As a final plug for another video I've done, I have actually done a video entirely about safety at LARP events and I really encourage you to watch it. It is a very important topic. And to continue on from that, We'll link on to my next point. The next step for surviving your first LARP event is to work out exactly what your comfort to risk ratio is. LARP is a collaborative hobby and that means you are going to be interacting with other people. However, your degree of interaction is entirely up to you. As an experienced LARPer, I very strongly encourage you to throw yourself into the game and get involved as much as you possibly can. That being said, before you go to a game, I also strongly recommend that you have a sit down and work out exactly to what degree of comfortableness you are happy with at a LARP event. Take a look at the game's website, look at its rules, look at its Facebook page, look at the community that takes part in this LARP event and see if you can glean what levels of role play you can expect at these events because it does differ from game to game. Does the LARP that you're actually attending have a strong PvP element? In which case, is there a possibility that your character is going to get mugged or even murdered in the game? Or are you attending a game where there are strong likelihood of mature themes? For example, Vampire the Masquerade, one of the most popular LARPs around the world, often includes a sensual element to their roleplay, the degree of which that varies from game to game. 
So it is very important that when you are going to a game, you find out what kind of role play is going to take part and to what degree you are expected to get involved with it. Some games will let you opt out of participating in elements that make you feel uncomfortable. Some games, however, do not have any methods to let people opt out of things like that. So you need to establish whether you are comfortable with that, and if not, whether this game is the game that you are actually looking for. There is absolutely no shame for having boundaries, just as so there is no shame in not having any boundaries. But it is important that the boundaries you do have align with the game that you're playing, as well as the other players that you are interacting with. If you go into a game with different expectations of where the boundaries lie, then you're going to find yourself not only clashing with other players, but possibly with the actual game itself. And there is absolutely no guarantee that a game will shift around you to accommodate your preferences. As long as there is no illegal, discriminatory, harassing or bullying behaviour, then expecting a game to change itself around you is not only unlikely, but it's actually incredibly unrealistic. So it is really important that when you choose a LARP, that you choose one that you know you're going to have fun at. If you want a game with lots of high levels of in-game risk, there are games out there that can provide that for you. And alternatively, if you want a game where there is no risk to your character at all, those are available out there as well. There is the brilliance of this hobby. There are so many games. You will find something that fits you almost perfectly. So feel free to take your time, go through everything and pick out the game that is absolutely right for you. Next step, immerse yourself. Once you enter the world of LARP, you are gonna hear the term immersion a lot. If you do not know what that means in terms of LARP, immersion is being able to completely delve yourself into the world of the game to the point where it feels real and it always feels like it has been. Immersion is actually important to pretty much every LARPer in the world. If it wasn't, we would not be taking out the time and energy to be role-playing ourselves through the stories we want to tell. But how much immersion that you actually want can vary quite a lot. For some, it's not that excessive. People can drop in and out of character at will very easily, and that's fine. To others, full immersion is probably the highest aspiration a LARPer could have. To some LARPers, there is no greater joy than trying to bring LARP to the brink of becoming an alternate reality. And the important thing to remember is that neither of these interpretations of immersion are wrong. It all comes down to the preference of the player. Some games will market themselves as going in one direction, while others will mark themselves as going in the opposite direction. So make sure you consider this when you're picking a game out to play. Feel free to really get into the role play if that is what you want to do. It is really tempting to just stick to the sidelines and just observe what is going on before you get started. And once again, I will say, that is an okay way of approaching this game. A lot of people want to do that, especially when they're just getting started. It's not abnormal. But truthfully, the more you give yourself to a LARP, the more you're going to get out of it. And I absolutely encourage you to throw yourself in as soon as you feel comfortable to do so. Volunteer to do stuff. If you see a plot or a storyline that you really want to get involved with, do so. As long as you're not shoving other people out of the way so that you can get involved and they can, you know, disappear into the unknown, then pretty much any other role player is going to be so happy to see another keen, excited face getting involved. As I said, LARP is a collaborative pot hobby. People are supposed to be getting involved and you are one of those people, so do it. And feel free to delve really deep into the world of your game. Lore is a massive thing in LARPs and the older a game is, usually the more lore there is available for you to look into. So see what you can find out about the game before you get there as well as during. These games are so interesting and have amazing stories that you can find out. Feel free to take in character props with you to help you immerse yourself in this world. Places like Amazon, eBay and many LARP retailers have lots of different choices of things that will help just add that little extra touch to make this game feel great for you. There's lanterns, bowls, notebooks, cutlery. All of these are available to make you feel like you actually live in the world of your LARP. 
I recently got these at a charity shop when I went on a thrifting expedition with a new friend. They look really cool and they were an absolute bargain and I absolutely cannot wait to put them up in my tent and see how they look. Make the game feel as real for you as you possibly can and you will find it so much more enjoyable. So my next tip, try not to take yourself too seriously. So in many ways LARP can come off as a rather serious hobby. In my experience of fandom communities, uh, fantasy and fantasy fans can often come across as very serious people. And I'm sure for many people, LARP itself is also a serious hobby. But in my experience, it's not always. I personally feel that LARP is so much better if you carry a good sense of humour with you. And I'm not gonna lie, when you get started in LARP, you are gonna feel pretty silly at first. But don't worry, because pretty much everyone who has been there, even an event longer than you, will have felt that way at some point during their LARP career. Nobody thinks that you're being silly as you just try to work out what the hell you're doing. I mean, look at me, I've been LARPing now for around nine to 10 years. I'm still trying to work out what the hell I'm doing. Some LARPs are incredibly serious affairs with dramatic scenes and stoic characters, but you're gonna find just as many LARPs that have lots of pop culture references and in-jokes and just silly weird stuff that's going on. And why do people do these things? because it's fun. And frankly, we're all there to have fun. And that includes you. So if you're not enjoying the game you're actually playing, or even just not enjoying the character that you've decided to put into a game, it is okay to switch things up and try other stuff. You are not bound to play a character that you are not enjoying. And you are certainly not obliged to do things that you don't enjoy just because you think that's what your character would do. So feel free to just let loose, have fun, and have a laugh at a LARP event. Odds are you'll likely find yourself having a great time, make a ton of memories, and can't wait to come back to the next one. Next tip, take a break, have a Kit Kat. No, I'm kidding, I'm not sponsored by Kit Kat, unless Nestle plays me good money. Nestle is not gonna pay me, pay me money. Um, naps are good, and LARP is intense. If you need to step aside and have a break, as long as you are not disrupting the game and the role play, then I don't know any LARP that won't let you take one. And if I'm wrong and there are LARPs that wouldn't, then there's something wrong with those games. Self-care is very important, especially in an environment where you can get swept up in the drama of it all. It is really easy to get swept up so much into role play that you suddenly realise that you missed lunch by about three hours and you can't remember the last time you stopped to have a drink of water. That's not okay. So if you have planned a break in your play to stop and recharge, make sure that you take it. Have a sit down, take a nap, read a little bit of a book if you've brought one with you. That's okay. And if you haven't planned to take a break in your game, then I strongly recommend that you do so. Even if that break is just you chilling out while you cook dinner, take that time. As I've said several times, I think in this video, this is a high emotions hobby and it is really easy to get overwhelmed, especially when you're still getting used to it. So even if you want to be go, 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 most LARPers will still suggest that you take a little bit of time just to process everything that's gone on in the game so far. Stop and enjoy what is happening going on around you. Don't let yourself get burnt out because if you do, you won't remember having as much fun as you actually did have. It is so much easier to focus on the negatives of a LARP event than the positives. So make sure that you do give yourself time to just relax as the game goes on. Because LARP is one of the most fun and engaging experiences I have ever had in my life. It is my favorite hobby. It's the reason this channel exists because I just love LARP and all the experiences I have with LARP so much. And I seriously can't wait for you to have that experience as well. 
So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an amazingly incredible time at your very first LARP event. Please let me know how it goes. I want to hear so much about all of the experiences you have at LARP. I want to know all about it. So please check out my Twitter, check out my Instagram, send me messages. I want to know all about how much fun you're having. And don't forget to subscribe here as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on a battlefield soon.